Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Enterprise Products Partners LP, ticker symbol EPD. We're looking at EPD today as a subscriber request. EPD is one of the largest midstream companies, and they're one of the few that provide midstream services across the full hydrocarbon value chain. Additionally, the business has one of the highest dividend yields of any stock in the market right now. Currently, they're paying out a 7.9% dividend yield. In addition to that dividend yield, their stock price is up 13% over the last year. They're currently trading for $23.88 per share. Over the last five years, their stock price is basically flat. They're down about 3.5%. Over 10 years, very similar. They're down 2.2%. However, going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the past nearly 18 years, EPD has compounded at a rate of about 3.5% annually. Keep in mind that their dividend payouts over this time would be in addition to this compounded annual return. So EPD tends not to have a lot of volatility between their 52-week high and their 52-week low. Right now, they're situated in the middle of that. Less than 1% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, so not a lot of short interest around the business. And they have a $52 billion market cap, so they're a large business. For more background about the company, Enterprise Product Partners is a master limited partnership that transports and processes natural gas, natural gas liquids, crude oil, refined products, and petrol chemicals. It is one of the largest midstream companies with operations servicing most producing regions in the lower 48 states. Enterprise is particularly dominant in the natural gas liquids market and is one of the few master limited partnerships that provides midstream services across the full hydrocarbon value chain. The company was founded in 1968 and is headquartered in Houston, Texas. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of EPD based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. So it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are gonna be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So EPD earns pretty steady and pretty stable returns on capital. They've increased their returns on capital slightly throughout this time frame. And currently over their last 12 months, they've actually had the highest returns on capital that they've had in any of this period coming in at about 11%. However, averaged out, EPD is earning about 9.5% returns on capital. So while that is slightly better than that of the typical business, that's going to be below that 14% benchmark we're looking for. And so this is going to be an X to start things off on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of the business. So we're looking for revenues, earnings, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. If even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X and will also be in taking into account their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. So over this time, EPD has grown their revenues by more than 90%, so their revenues are up nearly double. Their earnings have also increased by about 82%, and most importantly, their free cash flows have nearly tripled over this period. So this is very strong growth across the board here for EPD. This is a strong check our first check of the day on metric number two. And most important of all is that they've experienced such strong free cash flow growth. This is really key because free cash flows are really the lifeblood of any business and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to reinvest back into the business, make acquisitions, pay dividends, buy back shares, or pay down debt. Again, great sign to see such strong growth across the board here. This is our first check on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at EPD on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. In our previous metric, we learned that their earnings are up more than 80% over this period. And at the same time that they've managed to grow their earnings, they've only issued about 2% additional shares outstanding over this period. So only about 2% shareholder dilution at that. While we ideally don't like to see any shareholder dilution, that's a pretty modest amount. That's more similar to how their US peers have fared. That as a whole is in pretty sharp contrast to their Canadian peers. So if you're a long-term shareholder in the business, this is something you can likely live with. With their earnings growing way faster than they've diluted shareholders, this is strong earnings per share growth here on metric number three. And this is our second check in a row. 
Next up, metric number four is going to be very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, we learned that their free cash flows have more than tripled over this period, and they've had this very modest 2% shareholder dilution. So this is another strong check on metric number four. So far through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing leverage. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced over the last five years. It's typical that midstream businesses, especially in terms of transportation and pipeline businesses, will have a lot of debt because they tend to be pretty stable. EPD is likely no exception here. They ended 2021 with $27 billion worth of net debt, and currently they have $29.5 billion billion dollars worth of net debt. Over this time, they've only produced about $14.4 billion worth of free cash flow. Their free cash flows are coming in at less than half of their net debt position, meaning that this is going to be an X here on metric number five. Potentially even better for the company going forward is that their cash flows from 2021 and over their last 12 months have been much higher than where they've been at historically. Over their last 12 months, they produced about $5.8 billion worth of free cash flow. So if they're able to keep these more recent free cash flow numbers up into the future, and that's potentially a new normal for the business, then it looks like their debt profile would be more reasonable and would even be more comparable to more typical businesses. That's something that you'd likely have to dig into the company and do more work on to understand whether or not that's going to be the case. Either way, though, this is going to be an X on metric number five. And so far through our first five metrics, we have three checks and two X's. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially give us another reason to be interested in EPD. We're using their total enterprise value because it's going to take into account both their market cap and their net debt position and give us a picture of the business that's closer to the economic reality of the company, more similar to as if EPD were a private business. So currently they have an $82.5 billion total enterprise value. And we learned that over the last five years, they produced $14.4 billion worth of free cash flow. This means that in an average year, they're only producing about $2.9 billion worth of free cash flow. And so when we divide their $2.9 billion of their average free cash flow by their $82.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield of approximately 3.5%. So while that is pretty much right in line with the yield of the 10-year treasury, that's below that 5% mark we were looking for for a potential risk premium. And so on an average basis, this is an X here on metric number six. Again, because they're higher recent free cash flows, things potentially look brighter for the company going forward. We learned in the previous metric that over their last 12 months, they earned $5.8 billion worth of free cash flow. And so to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $5.8 billion of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $82.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield of approximately 7%. So that would be potentially offering a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. So because these two are on opposite sides of that 5% mark we're looking for, it's likely the case that the economic reality for the business lies somewhere in between these two. And so if you're potentially interested in enterprise product partners, you would just want to dig in and learn more about the business. But this could be an interesting business to do that further research on. Then as a bonus here, we're taking a look at EPD's dividend profile. So again, they're currently paying out a 7.9% dividend yield, which is one of the highest yields in the market. That's more than five times better than the yield that you'd be getting from an S&P 500 ETF right now. However, it's easy for investors to make mistakes by blindly chasing dividend yields, and this happens all of the time. Instead, it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business and to determine whether that company's dividend payouts are well supported by their earnings or their free cash flows, depending on the type of business. So for EPD, we want them to be able to support their dividends with their free cash flows. In a somewhat mixed bag, unfortunately, EPD has not supported their dividends with their cash flows in four of these five years. However, in 2021 and over their last 12 months, they were producing more than enough cash flow to be able to support their dividends. So again, if their more recent higher free cash flows are going to be more typical for the business going forward, then it looks like their dividend profile would be potentially in good shape here. But if the company's cash flows revert to where they've been at closer historically, it would look like they'd have trouble supporting their dividends going forward. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason for an analysis of enterprise product partners, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. 
So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So starting with an average of their free cash flows over the last five years to give us a more normalized perspective, then projecting those out based off historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown their free cash flows over the last 20 years. So assuming a growth stage for the business over the next 10 years where they grow their free cash flows at a rate of about 4% annually, then using a terminal stage for the 10 years out after that where their average free cash flows only grow at a rate of 3% annually. So these are historical growth assumptions that you need to do your own homework on to determine whether or not these are going to be potentially accurate and applicable going forward to give us this baseline projected estimate for EPD over the next 20 years. Then if we add in their tangible book value and you're seeking a potential 10% rate of return going forward from the business, it looks like a fair value for their stock price would be right around $30 per share. So in addition to the caveat about the historical growth assumptions, this 10% rate of return would be including their dividend payouts. So again, their dividend yield right now is 7.9%. So it looks like their stock price would only be compounding at a rate of about 2% annually in total from this 10% rate of return. Using these same historical growth assumptions from today's prices, it looks like you could reasonably expect about a 14% rate of return going forward from the business, which again includes their dividend payouts. So please be aware that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. In just a minute, we'll talk about a summary for EPD, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the company, number one is that enterprises marketing activities let it extract additional fees from its asset base while providing insights into each of its markets. Number two is that its expansion into petrochemical activities insulates enterprise from midstream cyclicality. And number three, as the largest player in the natural gas liquids market, enterprise is most leveraged to petrochemical demand in the Gulf Coast and international markets. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis for the company, number one, without substantial growth in U.S. hydrocarbons, most of enterprises' assets risk being underutilized and thus seeing lower revenue and fees. Number two is the promise of a large increase in natural gas liquids demand from China and India in particular never seems to materialize, and enterprises left holding the bag with export facilities. And number three, enterprises' marketing operations depend on differential spreads that could continue to narrow without investments by enterprise and third parties to spur further demand. So hopefully that offers a balanced perspective around some of the qualitative aspects of the company that support either a long or a short thesis of the business. So in summary, Enterprise Product Partners LP checks the box on three out of six of our metrics. While they do earn above average returns on capital, they're below that 14% benchmark we'd ideally be looking for. The company has experienced very strong growth across the board over their last five years, and they've only issued 2% additional shares outstanding over this time, meaning that their per share metrics are up in addition to their above average returns on capital. The company is similar to a lot of its midstream peers, Looks like it's using quite a bit of leverage, especially relative to their historical free cash flows. Their leverage looks, their leverage looks more reasonable, although still pretty high relative to their current free cash flows and where they've been at over the last couple of years. It looks like the company's yield for their average free cash flows to their enterprise value is right in line with the yield of the 10 year treasury. However, on a current basis, it does look like there's a potential risk premium with how the company is bringing in their current free cash flows and comparing that to their enterprise value it would be potentially interesting to dig in and learn more about EPD. Then looking at their very high dividend yield, in the last couple of years, EPD has been able to support this dividend with their free cash flows, but that was not the case in the previous four fiscal years that we looked at. And then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of enterprise. If you've done the work to validate those historical growth assumptions and you're satisfied with a potential 10% rate of return, then it looks like a fair value for the business is right around $30 per share. And from today's valuations, it looks like you could reasonably expect about a 14% rate of return going forward from the business. So again, keep in mind that this would be including their dividend yield and that this would be outpacing how the business has performed over the past nearly two decades. So there are a number of reasons why this wouldn't be potentially accurate going forward for the business. And you would want to dig in and learn more. It's also worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether or not it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about enterprise product partners. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. 
But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track, buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your rating experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct your research as if you're going to own 100% of a business, and you can determine the essence of that business and understand what's important and what's not important for that company going forward. So through this deeper research, you'll ultimately learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of the company, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Enterprise Product Partners LP ticker symbol EPD. Again, we were looking at the business today as a subscriber request and in part because of their very high dividend yield. So I'm happy to make an analysis of the company. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about EPD with me and have a great day.